Okay, so these are the notes for uh, 6.4, where we're working to find the inverses of functions. And finding an inverse of a function is really a, a simple two-step process. Let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. When we're trying to find the inverse of a function, um, that's the equation that does the exact opposite, or the equation that will undo every step of another equation. So for instance, this number 2, f of x is x plus 1 to the 5th power plus 1. You know, to say the opposite of a 5th power, well that's a 5th root, I know that. The opposite of adding 1 is, is subtracting 1. And so I could say I want to build an equation that's going to undo or, or simplify this equation down to x. Simplify it down where it doesn't have all this other stuff around it. To do that, the first thing I need to recognize is that f of x is the same as a y. And so when I go to find an inverse, I'm going to use this phrase. Step one, we're going to uh, trade x and y places. Okay, So wherever x is, it's going to become a y. Wherever y is, it's going to become an x. So this f of x, which is really a y, is now going to be an x equals. And where I have this x, I'm now going to put a y. Plus 1 to the fifth, plus 1. So step one is to trade x and y places. The second stage of finding the inverse is to solve for a y equals. Okay, Right now I have an x equals. I would like to get the y in the problem um, alone. So this guy right here, he's what I'm trying to work towards. So I need to work to get everything else um, out of the problem or move to the other side. When we do this, we do sad map. Uh, which is we do addition, subtraction, multiply, divide, exponents, and then parentheses. Essentially, we're working from the outside of the problem towards the inside value we're after, that, that y. Okay, that's our focus. So I have to look outside of the parentheses first to talk about what's out here. Well, there's an exponent 5 and there's a plus 1. In terms of which one is simpler to remove, the plus 1 is removed by a minus 1. Whereas if I took the fifth root over this whole thing, that one is not part of the fifth power, so I really want to remove this guy before I get to that fifth power. If I minus one from both sides, I should get x minus one equals y plus five or y plus one, sorry, to the fifth power. Notice that now the outermost layer in this problem is this fifth power right here. That's my outside, so I can focus on trying to get rid of it. And the way we get rid of a fifth power is with a fifth root. So that fifth root is going to cancel this fifth power. But to do that, I'm going to have to do the same thing on the opposite side, a fifth root of the x minus 1. So now I have the fifth root of x minus 1 equal to y plus 1. Well, this is going to be a pretty simple finish. All I have to do is get rid of this plus 1, and I can do that by minusing 1 from both sides. This is really important. This minus 1 is not inside of this root because the root already existed when I went to move the 1. So that means that my answer, uh, y, will equal the fifth root of x minus 1. I'm going to close that root. I usually will do that by just drawing a, a bar down to say I'm done with the root and then minus 1 outside of the root. Now this is the answer, but there is a nice way to formalize our answer. Okay, You see, this is f of x. To say that we have the inverse, the one and only, we're going to use a special nota notation. We'll go ahead and call it f of x, but we're going to put a negative 1 exponent on the f. And that literally means inverse. It's just a symbolic representation saying this is the inverse of f of x. And so everything else stays the same the way it is. This is the inverse function. So we trade x and y places, and we get y by itself. And that's how we label our final answer. Let's look at one more example. Uh, let's take a look at, say, uh, number 9 right here. First thing I'm going to do is change it to x equals cube root of y plus 2, and then a minus 2 on the outside. First thing I'm going to do is start peeling layers away by adding this outside 2. I get x 
plus 2 equals the cube root of y plus 2. Well, I want to remove this plus 2. To do that, though, I'm going to have to remove the cube root. The way that we remove a cube root is with a cubed exponent. We're raising it to the third power. Well, I have to raise this whole side to the third power, so I'm going to put it in parentheses. That will leave me with x plus 2 cubed equals y plus 2, because the cube root and the cube on the right cancel. And now all I have to do is minus 2 from both sides, and I can say that x plus 2 cubed minus 2 is h inverse of x. And there's my answer. Okay, So that's a little notation that we label at the end. It's not the, the process is about all the other stuff. That's just a label when we put that negative 1 exponent there. It's just to communicate that we have inverses. Now sometimes we come across equations and we want to know if they're inverses without creating the inverse. So one of the ways to do it that we do to prove that things are actual inverses is to do a composition. There is more than one way to do this. It's totally up to you how you want to handle it. But you basically take one of the two equations and we're going to plug it inside of the other function. The way I have this set up is f of g of n, where I'm putting equation g inside of f. Well, equation f looks like parentheses something minus 3 to the fifth power. And what do I put in there? I put the other equation. This guy is going to go in that parentheses. So it's the fifth root of n plus 3. This is different than the previous set of problems because I'm not going to peel layers. I'm actually trying to condense or PEMDAS. I'm going to simplify by pushing things together and looking for simple math that, be, that can be combined or simplified. So an example of this, I look inside. I can't add the fifth root of n to 3. That I, I can't do that or it would be written differently. So then I look at these parentheses. Now I put those there for substitution purposes, but there's nothing out in front. You know, There's nothing to distribute. There's no exponents. So that means they don't really matter. And I can just read this as one big fraction, one big parentheses. It's the fifth root of n plus 3 minus 3. Well, a plus 3 and a minus 3, those cancel. And leaves me with the fifth root of n all to the fifth power. But I know that a fifth power and a fifth root, they cancel. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is n. If the value inside of the composition is the same as the result of the composition, then yes, they are inverses. If you had 2n right here, it would be a no. If you had n minus 7, it would be a no. Now there are some that don't work in this process. So not every one of them is going to say yes. Some of them will say no. But the ones that say yes, we really need to see this work. This work is how we validate that we were right. Without that work, it's just a guess in the dark. Now there's some of them that are really easy to tell that something's wrong. You know, that fifth power right there and the fifth root right there eliminated each other. Well, would a fifth root cancel a fifth root? The answer is no. You need a fifth root and a fifth power, which we don't have. So this is an obvious no. Okay, And so I don't really need to do a lot of algebra. I don't need to do anything. That problem clearly cannot be an inverse function uh, set. And you can say the same thing when you see a cube with a fifth root. But otherwise, if you're not totally sure, you need to put one function inside of the other and see if it simplifies down. If you ever get stuck along the way, that means it's not an inverse function. I hope this helps uh, get you going down the right path, and uh, good luck. We'll see you in class.